Hi guys, it's Kamil here with my reaction to International Book Along List 2020, obviously. <laughs> that was just announced today. I'm quite excited, I have to admit. I've been following Booker, both the English and international ones, for such a long time that even though sometimes WTF expression crosses my mind seeing some of the positions on the list, not this time though, I still am a huge fan. Huge fun. This year, the judges for the 2020 International Booker Prize are pretty fantastic. And those are Jennifer Croft, who won the award herself alongside Olga Tokarczuk for translating flights, Valeria Luiselli, author of Brilliant The Children Archive, one of the best books I've read last year. She writes in Spanish and English. Then we have Jit Tahil, poet but most well known from his fantastic lucid novel Narcopolis that I loved. There's also Lucy Campos, who is the director of Villa Gilet, French Center for International Writing. She headed or created various literature festivals and projects and is a lecturer in comparative literature who wrote about Zebold, Kertes, Kotsi, Beckett and Kafka. Pretty good taste, right? And the panel is completed by the chair, Ted Hodgkinson, among others, a critic and a head of literature and spoken word at Southbank Center. He's a former editor of Granta magazine online version and many other things. The panel, so promising, made me even more hopeful for this year's long list. You've seen yourself that every year when International Booker Prize longlist is announced, like every other award, it's being validated through the lenses of representation and diversity, right? So if we look at gender diversification, we have eight women and five guys. But let's look at the geographies now. I will now go through continents and countries while talking about long-listed books from those geographic locations. So we have one novel from Africa, Red Dog by Willem Anke, translated by Michael Haynes. I think it's easier to see African novels on the English book, actually, just due to the fact that a lot of African writers would write in English. Of course, we have also French, probably as often used, Mm, and one of my favorite writers, Congolesian Alan Mabonko, writes in French, and actually he was previously longlisted for International Booker. We also have Portuguese used in Angola and Mozambique. Red Dog, this year longlisted book, was originally written in Afrikaans, a language used in South Africa mostly by white descendants of Dutch farmers that immigrated to South Africa in the 17th and 18th century. You already figured out then that this is a novel from a white perspective, right? <clears throat> Nonetheless, South Africa is the country of the birth of my favorite writer, John Maxwell Coetzee, and the plot of Red Dog as much as it sounds a bit unusually from historical perspective, is definitely very promising. As it's a story of an 18th century white immigrant, father of mixed race family, a rebel, who fights on the side of Kosa chieftains against the Boers. Boers were Dutch farmers that immigrated to South Africa, just for your information if you don't know. We have now three novels from Asia. The Enlightenment of the Green Gauge Tree by Shukofe Azar, translated by Anonymous, probably for the political reasons the translator didn't want to be disclosed. I will read that one for sure, as I already have it in an ebook format. It's a narration from the perspective of a ghost of a 13 year old girl whose family tries to find a way to preserve their lives and freedom in the chaotic decades following the 1979 Islamic Revolution in Iran. And that sounds great to me. I cannot wait. Then we have a book the most widely read probably on the list, The Memory Police by Yoko Ogawa, translated by Steven Snyder. I have read only one novel by Ogawa. Yes, the most famous by her, The Housekeeper and the Professor. 
which I liked but wasn't blown away by it. The Memory Police is a novel addressing the importance of preservation of memories and the past. On an unnamed island, various objects disappear. Most of the inhabitants are oblivious to the situation, while those able to remember are living in constant fear of the memory police, the institution the goal of which is to make sure that what needs to stay forgotten stays forgotten. That sounds brilliant, right? <laughs> and probably second to Yoko Gawa in terms of the bars is Georgian The Eight Life by Nino Haratishvili, translated by Charlotte Collins and Ruth Martin. I've seen it everywhere, in Poland as well. The Eight Life, even though from Georgia, was written in German. The Eight Life is a family saga set in Georgia with wide historical scope. And sometimes I love those type of books, sometimes I find them too soapy. So I will pick this one up when it's shortlisted, okay? <laughs> and it's also huge. From Latin America we have three novels. Argentinian The Adventures of China Iron by Gabriela Cabezon Comara. And this was translated by Yona McIntyre and Fiona McIntosh. And this is the second book I have in an ebook format, so I will pick this one up next. Um, this is a story of two women, China Iron, who, after abandoning her husband, gets on a train and travels through Argentina. We've just met on that wagon, soon to be her lover, Scottish woman named Liz. Okay, a bit of LGBTQ representation on the list, and that's good. Next, we have Samantha Schwieblin with her third nomination for International Booker. I mean, Shapoba. Uh, Little Eyes, translated by Megan McDowell, that's the novel. McDowell and Schweblin were longlisted for two earlier novels, as I just said, read by me Fever Dreams, that I enjoyed quite a bit, and last year it was Mouthful of Birds, that I haven't read yet. Little Eyes is from what I understood from a very enigmatic description, amusing on our connectivity in the world, described as usual for Schweblin in a bit darker way. We have people able to infiltrate distant geographical locations for good and for bad reasons, and based on that Schweblin meditates on modern times when currently the other person due to modern technology, can be a hand reach away, regardless of geography, right? Two novels from Argentina. Yeah, good job. The third one, uh, the third Latin American novel, is the one from the northern continent, Mexican Hurricane Season, by Fernanda Melhor. Translated by Sophie Hughes, yeah, Sophie Hughes. This one starts with a discovery of the corpse of a local woman known as the witch, who offered abortions for sex workers that served local oil industry. This is a dark criticism of capitalism. Sounds great, and the fact that it was published by Fitzgeraldo Editions makes me trust it even more. And now we have six books from Europe. From Norway, the other name Septology 1 and 2 by Jon Fosse, translated by Damon Searles. Fosse is a novelist and a dramatist. He is considered to be one of the best living dramatists. He is not particularly interested in the plot, though. <laughs> this is a book about, about an aging painter who reminisces about his life. But to me, it sounds great. Great. That makes us arrive at the only book I've read from the list, Michel Elbeck's Serotonin, translated by Sean Whiteside. Elbeck is a writer of such a high esteem and even bigger popularity that I cannot help but pick up his books. I've read quite a few of his novels, including two last ones. I always say that I would digest Elbeck better if he was some B-rated writer, as his position in the world of literature as an intellectual provocateur daring to go where nobody else goes is, in my opinion, a bit over the top. In Serotonin we have a typical Elbeck character another self-absorbed and self-pitying male protagonist driving through rural France, recalling his lost-in-the-past chances 
for settling down or for reaching happiness while getting involved with a doomed class of French farmers. And that part of rioting French farmers is the reason people constantly repeat that he predicted the movement of yellow vests in France. I think this is a bit of a stretch, but okay. The references to dead souls by Gogol are quite lovely there, and the novel by Gogol pops up in the book. Albeck's forte lays not in his writing, in my opinion, as his writing is always quite cursed, direct, pub-like, really. There are some better moments when he tries harder for a metaphor, but let's face it, a poet he is not. His forte is to put a shtick into social norms, to showcase the emptiness of our life, the banality of the silliness of some elements of our social contract, the self-destructiveness of the norms we follow, and here in certain him, he goes against individualism and atomization of our lives. The pursuit of me seems to be what he criticizes the most here, as the result seems to be the destructive loneliness. The ending of the book is quite unusually touching for Elbeck and very high note-ish. I don't think I will be ever able to go over his chauvinistic simpletons in his novels and the writing, but I have to say that his devastating account of loneliness and lost life due to largely egotistical tendencies and wrongly understood the religion of individualism moved me quite a bit, and I would recommend this one, actually. Staying in France, we have Faces on the Tip of My Tongue by Emmanuel Pagano, translated by Sophie Lewis and Jennifer Higgins, published by Pirin Press, a fantastic small publisher of European non-English fiction. Faces on the Tip of My Tongue is an interconnected short story collection set in rural France, describing life in small communities and exposing false presumption of us thinking we really know each other and I might pick this one up. Then from Germany we have Teal by Daniel Kelman, translated by Ross Benjamin. You know, Salman Rushdie called it brilliant and unputdownable. This one is set in 17th century Europe during the Thirty Years' War, with fictional characters mixing with the historical ones, like Elizabeth Stewart or Frederick King of Bohemia. Her husband, by the way. I believe also that this one is constructed as a string of vignettes. I read mixed reviews about this one. Salman Rushdie loved it, obviously. In Guardian, though, I've read that nothing later in the novel matches the first one-third of it. I will pick it up as long as I will get it in my hands. The fact that I cannot simply buy those books sucks big time. The New Year's resolutions, damn you. Now, the time has come for a brilliant child of European literature. Born in 1991, yes, you heard it, 1991, even I was already in school. Marike Lukas Rineveld is a Dutch poet and a writer, and her just translated by Michael Hutchinson, I think not yet released novel, The Discomfort of Evening, was long listed for International Booker. The Discomfort of Evening is a picture of a family consumed by grief. It's set on a dairy farm. It's a story told from the perspective of a young girl whose brother dies in an ice skating accident. I'd like to read that. And that brings us to the last on the list, Spanish Mac and His Problem by Enrique Villamatas, translated by Margaret Jul Costa. This seems to be another book about literature, and I love those. The main protagonist, a lifelong reader, starts to write a diary, but the one where the writer records a bit edited, shifted and distorted reality. I love those plays with form in literature, so yes, again, something I'm looking forward to. As you can see, the list is very Europocentric, which is not something unusual for Booker. For me, always, the most important is literary merit. And even though I would love to see more novels from Africa, for instance, as said at the beginning, a lot of writers from that continent publishes in English, which automatically excludes them. But of course, there are other languages used in Africa. But 
The books on the list sound pretty fascinating to me and I will do my best to read as many as possible. I'm limited as said by the fact that I have promised myself not to buy books this year, except for one singular book per travel. I request those from publishers for a review, but obviously I won't receive them all. I won't probably receive most of them, as it doesn't help with a request when the book was already published and already received such a huge publicity from Booker. It is what it is though. I try to figure something out. <laughs> yeah. Let me know what you think about the list. Uh, what are you planning on reading? And I'll talk to you soon, guys. Oh, and go and watch Eric from the Lonesome Reader video about this year's list. He recorded it in the Booker's headquarters. So yeah, go and watch it, guys. And bye-bye!